So where do I start? I'll take us back 10 years. So I did the summer venture and management program back in 2005. That is when I was a junior at Georgia Tech. So I have an engineering background, um, process engineering, industrial engineering. And um, I was very interested in business school. And so I heard about that program back then and applied, went, had an amazing experience. Um, but to be honest with you, I felt like I'm not sure that I fit in here. Like I've never thought I would go to an Ivy League school. Um, and so it kind of plays my confidence even a little bit, even being there. So I knew it was like a dream for me. It was surreal that I was there over that summer. Um, and I knew I wanted to come back, but I was kind of feeling like I'm not sure if I'm good enough, even though I'm here right now. And so went on throughout my career, um, had a career in banking project management for a couple of years, wasn't feeling totally fulfilled. So I, I shifted over into education, which is my passion, go hard for social justice, specifically in educational equity. And this is my jam. This is what I want to do. And as I am climbing the ranks and learning more about school districts and nonprofits in this space and charter schools, I'm just like, you know what? Like the skill set of someone who is successfully running a company is so needed in this area. The way that we make decisions um, could really benefit from even me as a decision maker at the table right now, um, if I just had more of a skill set in finance and, and just other things that I would learn at business school, I think it would be amazing. And so that's how I decided that I wanted to go to business school. As I shared before, finances were our main concern, so I plan to only apply to consortium schools. Um, but I had mentors who knew throughout this last 10 years that HBS was a dream of mine. And every time I would talk to them about business school, they're like, well, how come Harvard's not on this list? Like, this is what you've been talking about. Like, this is you. And um, one of our senior execs at work, he was like, I don't care what your GMAT score is because my GMAT score is low. And so he was like, I don't care what your GMAT score is. Um, you have leadership and that's a profile of what HBS is looking for. And so he said, do your best on your GMAT. Yes, take it again, but you still need to go because of this profile of leadership and this body of work that you've led here. I'm not sure how HBS could turn you down. And so just having those types of conversations really helped to build my confidence. Um, so I could see that, you know, like, let's just give it a shot. And um, the worst they could say is no. And so I gave it, I gave it my best, was super excited when I got the interview, got extremely nervous. Um, and it was just myself. I talked in my interview, I talked about my husband, I talked about my son. Um, I talked about the work I do in my community. Like I just talked about everything and I was really myself, which I felt was a little bit different from some of the other candidates or a lot different from some of the other candidates who were there. Um, but I, I hope they really appreciated that. And you know, that's where I'm going. So I'll be very different from everyone and bring something a little bit unique to the table. So we're excited for this journey. We're excited for this opportunity. It is, it is life changing. <laughs> I did not mention my family in my essays. Um, <clears throat> I don't think it came, it just, um, in terms of how I was writing and things that I was writing about, um, the fact that I was a mom just didn't come up. Um, but in my interview, I definitely did. And the last question that I got was like, what do you do for fun? <laughs> it's like the question I dread all the time because I don't do anything for fun right now. I have a toddler, my life revolves around him. And I shared that my fun is singing with my kid on the weekends and taking him to the park and having picnics and introducing him to new animals at the zoo. Um, and just how that is actually what is fun to me, teaching him different things and, and kind of seeing him develop and transform. Um, and I was able to speak about that and be really honest at that right now at the place I'm at in my life. That is my fun. And um, and that's, that's what I shared. And really, that's kind of like the element, I guess, that I kind of talked about my family in, in that particular question. And it was one that I was dreading um, beforehand. Um, and just being honest and vulnerable, I think, you know, really played well because it was the truth. When I found <laughs> this blog, this website that you started, I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. There's other women out there. I'm not going to be the only one. Um, and I think that's just it, bringing awareness to show how many other women are still going for it, even though you, you've gone and moved on to different phases of your life, you're not saying that, oh, I could never do that. Um, that's something that I had kind of fell into, and each time I meet someone now, I'm telling them about MBA Mama just to, to kind of continue to highlight that there are more women who are doing this, um, and it's not just women who are just going to school, which is great. You know, like first of all, we need more women in MBA programs. So 
that's awesome. But it's also women who are just at a different place in life, who have kids, who are thinking about having kids, who are pregnant. Um, and just kind of continuing to hear those stories and see how you balance it. I think that the, a mom who can be successful in her career and who can go to business school and take care of home and take care of her kid and balance all of that um, has an amazing skill set in terms of leading a company. Um, and there's so much of that that is transferable. And so being able to just um, continue to hear stories and be encouraged, be inspired, um, and being able to even learn more about how to market yourself and how this is actually an asset and it's not something that's a deficit, I think is a really huge deal. And I think that this platform brings more exposure to that um, and awareness.